qualche giorno fa mi è stato chiesto che cosa rende ASICS unica sul mercato. Chiaramente molti di noi sono interessati solamente alle scarpe, ma sappiamo che in realtà le aziende sono fatte di persone e di conseguenza ho voluto approfondire sentendo AJ, il general manager e responsabile a livello globale del lancio, forse il padre fondatore, forse parte del gruppo che ha aiutato a realizzare sia le eh, Nova Blast sia le Glide Ride, che cosa rende questa azienda diversa rispetto alla competizione, sentiamo che cosa ci ha detto, poi io commenterò con dovizia di particolari ogni singola se sezione, non perdetevi la parte finale dove si racconta delle principali novità delle scarpe del 2022. What is the ASICS competitive advantage versus the competition? Yeah, I think our approach to innovation, uh, our unique craftsmanship approach makes it gives us a competitive edge. The way we go to the market, where you saw today, we have a team in Japan, a team in Boston, our team here in Europe, we really utilize all those people. And we utilize the, the pr professional strengths of everyone to come together and build the best innovation possible. So our, our strength is our approach. Ovviamente non potevo non chiedergli che cosa ha cambiato la percezione del marchio, secondo me sicuramente il lancio delle Nova Blast. In my opinion Nova Blast changed the perception on ASICS uh, as a competitive uh, yeah. uh, company. What is your view on that and what is your spin? Yeah, I agree with that. I think uh, a lot of people weren't expecting that from ASICS. Not only the foam, but the design. Internally too, there was a lot of uh, concern Is this too fast? Are people going to like the foam? So for us, it, we were nervous how it would go over and the market had responded so positively. So you're right. I mean, it's definitely changed the game for us internally and externally. And as a result, it's changed the game of how we approach footwear, the category, how we build and how we design. Uh, so it's, if, if you want to, you could argue that that was the shoe that really changed the game for us. L'ovvia domanda era poi quella di quando saranno lanciate le Nova Blast 3 e quali saranno ovviamente i cambiamenti principali. And how do you see the uh, Nova Blast 3 coming to the market? I'm really excited about it. I think if you like the Nova Blast 1, you saw the improvements in Nova Blast 2 with the changes in geometry, the changes in stability to address some of the issues from Nova Blast 1. What Nova Blast 3 is is out of this world. Uh, it's a taking all the best of Nova Blast 2, improving the weight, improving the ride. I think if you're a Nova Blast fan, if you're an ASICS fan, you're going to be blown away. Gli ho chiesto poi trend in Europa ha dimostrato in effetti di conoscere davvero bene, come tra l'altro li conoscono bene tutti quelli che si sono iscritti al canale negli ultimi mesi. What are your key view on the trends for the European market and what insight are you learning uh... In, uh, in this event. I think the insights that we're seeing from the European market is, you know, that every market is a little bit different. Uh, the continued interest in foam innovation is continuing to grow. There's a more of an open conversation now. I think the European is really interested in stack height, not just in racing shoes, but in training shoes. And so you're seeing that migrate. The Nova Blast is a good example. High foam, high stack. Uh, that, that is growing. But also seeing this expansion of interest in um, performance. The European market has always been a leader in performance in terms of just very serious consumer, but the breadth and depth of that is expanding. COVID has brought in so many runners and they're getting serious about it. And so I think my takeaways from the European market is the core basics of it are still strong. It's growing, uh, but the innovation and interest in foam and cushion and stack height is really starting to expand. Poi gli ho chiesto quali sono le risposte di ASICS alle esigenze dei podisti amatori che di fatto stanno invecchiando e quindi vediamo cosa ci ha detto. In my opinion, of course I think you have better statistics, but runners are becoming older as well and my YouTube channel has 48% is over 45, so the viewer are What advice can you give to, to those kind of segments? Yeah, I think it's important to understand your product goals or your running goals and find the right um, shoe for you. I would also say that depending on when you come in, if you're someone that is in your late 40s or early 50s and you've been running for a long time, you might be nervous a lot, a lot of the innovation because I've been running for a long time. I might look young, but I've been running for over 20 years, but the innovation has changed in the last 10 years it's been dramatic and so I would say be open-minded and if you are your your world will change for the better uh, as you've experienced with the racing shoes right 
And so for that older consumer, be open-minded. Uh, and if you do, I think you're going to be really rewarded because there's so much fun stuff out there. If you're a new runner, I would say um, I think you're spoiled for choice. <laughs> You've got a lot of options if you're a new runner that's older. Just find the right shoe for you. F buy based off of comfort and then go from there. You know, trust yourself on comfort and you can go from there. Chiaramente poi gli ho chiesto delle Meta Speed Plus, sentiamo che cosa ci ha risposto e qual è la ragione per comprare questa scarpa. Tell me about what is the, in your opinion the, the single technical reason to believe that is the best shoes in the market. I think it's uh, the craftsmanship and I talked about it is you saw the level of detail and research that went into it. The foam is superior, the plate is, uh, is excellent, uh, the upper and the lace story, right? So we have a, a lace that's specific to racing, an upper that's specific to racing, all these details and the, and the research behind it. So I think the shoe is out of this world. But if there's one reason, it's craftsmanship. Poi gli ho domandato la scelta tra le due scarpe, le Sky e le Edge. Sentiamo cosa ci ha detto. Vi ho messo qualche video per aiutarvi a capire le differenze tra le due scarpe. To which runner do you recommend the uh, Meta Speed Plus on the both versions? Yeah, it comes down to stride versus cadence, is how we call it. So think about, I think if you're a runner, think about how you generate speed or power. If you're doing it through turnover or if you're doing it through long strides. To, that's going to be a good indicator. And if you want, you can look at maybe your GPS app that tracks your stride to see, uh, help you determine which one's best sure, for I, you. Sure, I have a run scribe, so yeah. I, I, know, I know pretty well. The question is also sub three hours or even uh, sub four hours? Uh, yeah, I think it matters. I think uh, beyond that, maybe it get, could get into personal preference. But sub four, sub three, finding that right shoe is important. And I think more people are probably cadence runners than they think. Um, But uh, yeah, I think it's important for that sub four and below. L'unico aspetto di cui AJ non era perfettamente a conoscenza era il lancio delle scarpe da pista, però sicuramente nei prossimi mesi saranno lanciate e nel frattempo è arrivato il mio famoso coniglio. Vediamo cosa ci ha detto. Let me ask you a question. There are a lot of runners in, in my country that want to do on the, a run on the track. We talk about today uh, about the Metaspeed LD, any ideas on when this will be launched to, uh, to the public? You know, I'm not sure. I'm not as close to that project right now. Um, I know it's in development and it's making good progress, but I couldn't comment at this time. Ho inoltre chiesto di quando sarà lanciata la Magic Speed 2. Fuori onda mi ha raccontato parecchi eh, dettagli, ma secondo me potrebbe essere davvero una scarpa che farà davvero uh, sognare tutti i polisti amatori. You haven't mentioned during the, uh, this event on the uh, uh, Magic Speed and what is the evolution of the, the Magic Speed. It's very well recognized by the Italian uh, market. Uh, any spin on uh, the second version? Yeah, I think we're going to continue to um, uh, improve on foam uh, and accessibility. So broadly speaking, I think if you think about where the Magic Speed is so great now, We want to make it a little more um, usable by more consumers. The fit is very specific right now. So how can we stay true to what Magic Speed provides, but get more runners in it? And also running, recognizing that maybe this could be a training shoe for a lot of people. And many people are using it as a training shoe. So how do we maximize that training aspect? Alla fine ho domandato in quali condizioni secondo lui dovrebbero essere utilizzate le scarpe con fibra di carbonio e se avessi fatto il personal best alla fine ho corso comunque molto velocemente. Do you suggest to use training shoes with carbons or without carbon? I think it depends on the training exercise. If you're going on a, uh, a long run, probably not. But if you're doing a threshold or a tempo run um, or a fartlek, could be good. Last question. Do you think tomorrow I will do my PB on the uh, Sky 2, considering that my PB is 15.45? Uh, I, I, what type of shape are you in right now? Are you feeling good, fit? Good shape, yeah. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I, think it's, I, I feel pretty good about your future. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you, AJ. Yeah, really, thanks so much. Really a pleasure and uh, we'll keep in touch. Yeah, thanks so much, take care. Vi ringrazio per aver seguito tutto il video, stay strong, keep running, iscrivetevi al canale, sarebbe davvero gustoso. Io spero di riprendermi davvero velocemente nei prossimi giorni ulteriori video ASICS dove vi racconterò la strategia 2022.